previously on Hey There, Dave here. This guy's production quality is through the roof. A lot of people have asked to see the kind of behind the scenes from that studio that I built for the black card video. Everything about his setup, I think, is perfect. And once again, behind the scenes of my little setup here. And now, as promised, let's head upstairs and take a tour of my studio. The studio is really just the third floor of my house, and I originally set it up because my girlfriend, Megan, wanted to uh, start her own YouTube channel. Welcome to Subscriber Therapy. That lasted all of, I think, three episodes. This space was um, essentially a loft bedroom on the third floor that I never got around to furnishing. This is the green screen that I used for her set. It's very echoey up here, so these are some sound blankets. And if you come right through here, this is the studio shot that you guys are used to seeing. Obviously, we have the tracking camera over there that's moving, and you guys seem to like that. But what's going on behind the scenes? Let me show you. Zoom all the way out, and this is what you see. Both of my cameras are being used right now, so I'm going to show you on my iPhone. So on the other side of the scenes, this is a Canon G7X, and it's just on a motorized rail system. This is literally the cheapest one on Amazon. I needed something, I needed it quickly, so this is the one I went with. But it just goes back and forth continuously. My main camera is a Canon EOS R. The little monitor was too hard to see if I was in focus, so I got this bigger monitor, which still was a little bit difficult to see. So I added a TV on a stand over there, so if you ever see me looking off in this direction, I'm just looking at myself. And you've seen in some of the shots, I have this other monitor. This is actually an Atomos Inferno. It is a HD recorder, so I can record on the camera and I can also record on this device. This is a higher quality signal. I don't know if you can even tell a difference on YouTube, but everything gets so compressed. The gradient on this background light, for example, just gets crunched down by the YouTube uh, compression algorithm. Different than the YouTube like algorithm. So if I keep using the studio, I'll probably end up putting something else back there. This is going to be a work in progress, but lighting it up back there, just a couple of aperture MC lights set to teal. It's actually the exact tint of the logo color for both Dumb Money and Hey There Dave here. Why don't I just bring the big camera over here? So now bringing you over to this side of the camera, you see that I have an Aperture 120D. It's a daylight balanced light inside the light dome with the grid that helps reduce the spill of light from the background. This over here is a five in one reflector uh, diffuser that I just have a light. This is actually just a Fresnel light shining through. It's actually the same fixture as I have over here that I've been using as my backlight. So from this side, you can see all of the lighting and I really think that lighting is probably more important than even what camera you have. This paper roll that's now on the floor was hung on a couple of light stands and that was the backdrop. This light over here that you saw on the camera that went back and forth was kind of more a practical light just to have something cool to look at on the set, but it also did provide a little bit of fill. I don't know how interested you guys are in these kind of behind the scenes video making videos. If you are, let me know in the comments because I'd love to make those too. Credit cards aren't my only nerdy hobby. I also love video production. My girlfriend always says that I need to put that on my match.com profile. But completing the behind the scenes tour, this monitor is mounted to a mic stand that has a boom arm and this is a Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I think. This microphone is actually just a prop. This is a RCA 77. It's it's an actual old vintage microphone. I've been collecting vintage microphones uh, for forever. Another thing to add to my match.com profile. The rest of the backdrop when not the seamless paper is just sheetrocked wall. I'm in a third floor loft. I wasn't really sure if I liked having all the uh, ceiling slant show up on camera, but then when I lit it, it looked kind of cool. So I just went with it. Fun fact, I think this is the exact same lamp that is in the background of David Spade's uh, Instagram videos. And one more important feature of the studio tour. This is where my vlog dog, Chimmy, likes to uh, hang out when I'm filming videos. And that's it. So if you've watched through all of this, I did mention that I'm heading out of town for the holidays. So before I sign off, how about a quick look at what's in my wallet, specifically when I travel, because I basically swap out all of the credit cards in my wallet, depending on where I'm traveling to. I'm going out of the country, I'm going to the Bahamas. So I need to make sure I'm carrying cards that don't have the 3% foreign transaction fee and that I'm still maximizing my cash back and other rewards. So here's what I'm doing. My go-to restaurant card is now this Bank of America cash rewards card for 5.25 5% cash back at restaurants, but there is a 3% foreign transaction fee, so I'm not going to be using this in the Bahamas. This is my go-to everything else card, 2% cash back 
on everything else. It's the City Double Cash card, but it also has the 3% foreign transaction fee. Those are the only cards that I actually carry in my wallet, so I'm going to have to redo everything, which is where my paper wallet comes into play. I will be staying at a Bonvoy hotel, so this is the Bonvoy American Express card. It's a $95 annual fee. I think I booked my hotel reservation with it. I'll put this in my wallet just in case they need the card in person. I'll be bringing my American Express Platinum card because this is the card that I bought my airfare with and I might need it to uh, check in or something. Then I have a couple of different priority pass cards. I'm not going to actually even bother putting these in my wallet because I have the digital version and that seems to be working pretty much everywhere I've tried lately. And then for restaurants and every other kind of random expense, I hate to say it, but I'm going to have to go back to the Uber card because it doesn't actually switch over for me until February. I did symbolically and literally shred that card for a TikTok video that I made. <laughs> But I called them and they will be FedExing a new card to me that is supposed to arrive tomorrow. And it is a Visa card, so unlike the American Express card, it is very widely accepted. I'm gonna have to figure out a new travel card though, because my two go-to cards are no good when you're traveling abroad. What else do I keep in my wallet? My driver's license, my insurance card, and an ATM card. This is my last video of 2019. I thank you guys so much for joining me on this journey through 17, nearly 18,000 subscribers now. I cannot thank you guys enough. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're here watching this video all the way to the end and you haven't hit the subscribe button, what are you waiting for? You clearly like what I'm doing enough to make it till the very end. And literally this camera's almost out of battery. So I'm just gonna wrap up here and say, thank you guys so much for watching. Drop me a note down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of this video. It was kind of all over the place. That battery light will not stop blinking. My name's Dave Hansen. I'll see you next time. Oh, and if you're wondering what this wallet is, it's from a company called Trove out of the UK. It's like elastic and carbon fiber. Very cool.